Echo. In remote podcast interviews is a huge distraction. At its best, it's frustrating. And at its worst, it can destroy episodes. It's simply bad for business if you're a professional content creator. But what if we could prevent and avoid echoes before it derails our remote interviews? That would be great, right? That's what we're going to cover in today's video. Let's get into it. If you're new here, what's up? My name is Zachariah Moreno. I'm co-founder and CEO of Squadcast. And on our channel, we help you level up your remote recording so you can create better podcasts and video content from anywhere in the world. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you'll never miss out on new videos. Today, we're talking about echo in remote recording sessions. Let's start with echoes. What are they? And why are they problematic when recording with remote collaborators? For example, you and your guest are connected remotely in a professional cloud recording studio like Squadcast, and you can hear your own voice coming back at you, probably with a bit of delay. Your voice is echoing back to you. You might also call this feedback. That is the echo we're learning to avoid. The good news is that echoes like this are completely preventable, and we even have multiple solutions that we'll get into. It can be helpful to add some context around what's going on in these situations. What's causing this echo? So let's go through a few questions that'll help get to the root cause. Is everyone wearing headphones? Hopefully the answer is yes. Headphones are not always fashionable or comfortable, but they're a staple in recording studios and for good reason. Headphones are preferred because the alternative is speakers. And speakers amplify sound just like our voices. Microphones are usually sensitive enough to capture the sound that's coming from those speakers. That's the cause of this echo. When one or more people are not wearing headphones, the microphone is picking up the sound coming from the speakers, your voice, along with the other person's voice, which is then sent back to you. Plug in the headphones, Select them as the default audio output device in your OS sound settings. Refresh your web browser and make sure the headphones are selected in the app you're using. But what if someone doesn't have headphones as an option and only has speakers? This is where echo cancellation can really help us out. Nobody wants to reschedule because they don't have headphones. Echo cancellation is a setting that can be toggled on in Squadcast. It prevents echo pretty well for a software solution as an alternative to the hardware option of headphones. Using echo cancellation has some trade-offs that you'll want to consider that headphones just don't have. For example, when multiple people speak or laugh at the same time, the audio volume or gain will be automatically decreased and then increased again when the laughing stops. This is typically called AGC or auto gain control. AGC helps us to prevent echo, but it reduces the volume to accomplish it. This results in a form of compression, sometimes called volume ducking, because the volume is ducked for a period of time. Compression reduces audio quality, and that's where the trade-off comes in. It can be fairly easy and maybe polite to avoid speaking at the same time as others in the recording session, but that's something you'll want to ensure everyone is mindful of to avoid any volume ducking compression from reducing your recording quality. This is why headphones are simply the best, because they avoid the need for this trade-off, remove the need for any extra software that can reduce quality in our audio signal chain, and behavior changes of our collaborators. That covers headphones and echo cancellation, and that should give us a good framework to think through our options. But we're not finished just yet. Now, everyone is wearing headphones. They're all plugged in and selected, but you still hear echo. Now what? Time out for a second. If nobody is using speakers and that is the cause of echo, then why would I ever hear echo? What you're likely hearing in this scenario is called bleed, and you can think of it like echo's cousin. Headphones are little mini speakers that we wear on or over our ears. And while microphones don't typically capture the sound coming from our headphones, with the right combo of microphone sensitivity, type of headphones, the volume of our headphones, and the proximity of our headphones and microphones, it can and does happen. Bleed is when those tiny speakers in your headphones bleed audio out 
where it's picked up by the microphone and that causes the feedback. You can tell the difference between echo and bleed in a few different ways. You'll typically hear echo at a louder volume, while bleed is typically at a volume more faint. Also, if everyone is wearing headphones, it's very likely bleed because you've already prevented the speaker issue. Now that we know what bleed is and how it's similar and different from echo, how do we avoid or prevent it from impacting your remote recording sessions? The solution to bleed is thankfully a lot simpler. Just lower or reduce the output volume in the headphones, just the normal computer volume. Lower it a bit, test and repeat until you don't hear the bleed any longer. You will hear the bleed reduce with the volume and it will eventually stop. Plus, it's better for our ears. Pro tip, if you've done all this and you still want to make sure bleed doesn't show up in your recordings, we recommend recording a 15 second sound check downloading that file and then playing it back at a higher volume to ensure there is no faint bleed in the background. Another question we hear a lot is, how do you know which person needs to make adjustments to eliminate the echo or bleed? Well, if it's just you and one other collaborator, it's fairly straightforward. If you are hearing yourself feedback, then it's the other person that should switch to headphones, enable echo cancellation and or reduce their volume. If there are more than two collaborators, then it can be helpful to mute everyone else and unmute one by one until you find the echoing collaborator and then make those changes. And that's everything you need to know about echo, why it's happening and how to prevent it in your remote recordings. If you have any questions for us or want to explore further, find us on social. We're at Squadcast FM on all platforms. I'm Zach in space on Twitter and I would love to chat. Plus, you can always comment here on this YouTube video and we'll reply ASAP. Until next time, happy remote recording.